how to day trade supply and demand. So if you're looking to learn how to day trade uh, price action, you want to read charts very, very well. I'm going to give you a kind of a quick little overview here. Um, what we're looking at the 15 minute time frame. Normally, I do not trade the 15 minute time frame. Um, but you know, for the sake of this video, for the sake of training, I felt like I was going to do something a little bit differently and kind of show you guys how it correlates to all the other uh, time frames, pretty much. Um, but what we're looking at here is the five day, 15 minute time frame here. What I've got marked out is some supply and some demand levels. So what is an area of demand? An area of demand is just an area of price action where we either have a lot of consolidation or a heavy support zone for the for whatever time frame we're looking at, right? It's all subjective to the time frame you're looking at. An area of supply is gonna be your level of resistance where stocks have moved to in the past and have had trouble breaking through and or our previous support levels that have been lost and now retesting. That's going to be your new supply zone. So what we're looking at here is the triple Q's ETF. I've got a few uh, supply and demand zones. Our top supply zone um, on the triple Q's for this coming week is going to be $330 to the long side. We're also going to have a little bit of um, a little bit of supply at around that 321. We're also going to have some at 309 and then our demand zone is going to be 305. So what we're looking at here is if we do confirm 309, 310 this week, we do have a upper range here or a middle range where we've got room from 310 to 321. Now, that doesn't mean that as soon as we reclaim 309, 310, that we're just going to come straight up here without a down tick. You know, the 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 way and the path that this takes to the 321 if and when it gets there can be different. You know, we can initially bust this back test and then kind of trickle higher. You know, we can kind of put in a big green candle followed by a lot of consolidation and then a rejection back down. You know, we can also kind of just hang around towards the bottom and then have one big day all the way back up. So it's going to look very, very differently. Now, you're never going to catch the whole move. You're never going to, you know, kind of ride the wave all the way to the end. But what you kind of want to use supply and demand zones for is, you know, picking decent or good entries and having a stop loss and having an area of take profit, right, or cut loss zone. So, for example, for me, if I was going to look to day trade the triple Qs and I'm going to look for uh, to play in this 309, 310 to 320 range, what I want to see is as long as we can break 309 and hold this level and have this 20 SMA kind of curling up with us, as long as we stay over 309, I stay in the trade. Now, it's going to be a little bit choppy. You're going to have ups and downs. You might go into a little bit of drawdown during that process, depending on where exactly you got filled and, and where what price you entered. But as long as you stay over 309, which is going to be the supply zone, you stay long in the trade. Um, now, the art of trading comes to where you're going to take profits. Now, as a trader, that's probably one of the hardest things to do next to cutting a loss. But um, that decision is just something that's going to come with a lot of experience. It's going to come with a lot of screen time and it's going to come with just getting an overall feel for the markets. So, you know, would you be wrong taking profits at 312 at 315? Absolutely not. Uh, would you be wrong at taking profits at 317, waiting all the way to 321? Absolutely not. Would you be wrong taking profits at 311? Absolutely not. The choice is yours. You just have to understand that once you do start getting into these profit zones here, you do need to start clearing some uh, size off the table and kind of taking profits along the way up. Uh, because, you know, what? one thing that I see is a lot of traders... Uh, do is, you know, they have a decent entry here and then they have an opportunity to take some profits here or here or here. And then next thing you know, we do come into a minor level of, of uh, supply here, get rejected. And then, you know, we have a big move down in the market and now they kind of go from a green to red position. And then they're kind of just wondering, you know, what the hell happened? So make sure you're always kind of taking profits along the way. Um, definitely, I would take profits before 321 because this is our next uh, supply zone here. We're going to need to do the same thing where we need to break and either retest that and kind of stay in this zone. And as long as we stay over 320, 321, you can ride this trade into the next uh, area to take profits at, three, at 330. Um, so what happens if we kind of come up here, chop around a little bit? and lose this uh, zone. If we start to lose the 309 zone, then that's an indication that your trade has failed and you're going to need to get out of the trade. 
Um, or you can kind of wait and kind of see when we do break this 309, 310 area, what do we do? And then if we lose 309, you can take your short position and then just know that 305 is going to be your support level. I would be taking profits between 309 into 305, and that would be a good area to kind of uh, take those profits. Obviously, anything below 305 is a macro flush, and I would definitely want to, you know, get short as soon as we breach that. And then as long as we're staying under the 305, continue to hold my position and lock in those gains. I hope this video kind of helps give you a general understanding of how to trade supply and demand. If you guys want more information, definitely check out my Discord and also subscribe to my YouTube channel, and I will see you guys all in the next video.